Good morning and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Rogue Valley in Medford, Oregon. I'm Kimberly Hawkins, Senior Minister and Spiritual Director here, and I am just very grateful that you're all joining us today. And we apparently have people from all over the world online with us, and that's because we have a very special guest speaker, which I will tell you more about in just a moment. I want you to know that we are an open and affirming, really radically inclusive, loving community dedicated to teaching spiritual tools to transform personal lives and help make a world that works for everybody. We're different because you joined us in this virtual community this morning. I want you to know that we're practicing safe social distancing. We're six feet from each other, the 10 of us in the room. So we have, um, we, Yes, we are, are honored to have Dr. Jean Houston with us this morning. She, she is going to be speaking on a very timely topic, the lure of becoming, how to live between two worlds, which I think is so appropriate for this time of global pandemic. And before we get to that part of our service, I want to introduce another couple people in our team, our music team this morning. Anton Miserak and Laura Berryhill, and they're ready to perform our opening song. I'd like you to join me now in our opening prayer. So taking a couple deep breaths, if you will, with me. Allowing ourselves to just pause. It is the Christian Sabbath, a beautiful time to just take a break, take a breath, take time to recognize, to feel, to embody that presence and power of love that is always with us, in us, through us, around us. Call it whatever we will, God, spirit, Atman, creative intelligence of the universe. It is everywhere present, all-knowing, all-powerful. In God, all things are possible. I know it as goodness, as harmony, as peace, as love, as creativity and expansion. And I know that each one of us is a unique, precious incarnation 
of that divine presence. And so that each of us has within us that essence of goodness, of creativity, of intelligence, of love. That is the absolute nature of our being. That peace that passeth understanding is always available right within us. And so is that power that created the worlds, the universes, the stars and the planets that created these human bodies capable of functioning without our conscious thought. That miracle of creativity is something that is our divine inheritance as well. And so I am so grateful for this opportunity this morning to be with you virtually in hopes that we, and the intention is that we offer some inspiration, some reminders of the truth with a capital T that we all truly know at the depths of our soul, that we are one, that we are powerful, that we are divine beings and that we have the ability to create a world that works for everyone. So I bless this time together. I bless each one watching, knowing that through the message from Dr. Jean Houston, from the music, that we each receive something that we needed to hear this morning, knowing that spirit works wonders and that absolutely everything is in perfect divine order giving thanks to speak these truths, giving thanks for everyone here in this room supporting this service and everyone watching. I release this word into the heart of the divine, knowing that subjective mind that we call the law has no choice but to receive the impress of my thought and to act upon it. So this prayer, as all prayers, is answered. With great gratitude, we say together, and so it is. Amen. Just a reminder, I know we've got many viewers joining us this morning, and it would be really sweet if in the chat you said hello with your name and perhaps where you're dialing in from, where you're tuning in from. It would be really sweet for us to, um, to track that and to know that, and we welcome you. I, I meant to say earlier that we, we really welcome you no matter where you happen to be on your personal spiritual journey. We in Science of Mind believe there's one God, many paths. For our reading this morning, I've chosen to share some excerpts from the foreword to our Science of Mind textbook, which is the seminal work of our founder, Ernest Holmes. And this foreword happens to have been written by Dr. Jean Houston, who is our guest speaker this morning. She writes, if I were to state the essence of the teachings of the science of mind, it would be that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. The core of each human being is the original creative genius of the universe. We are, therefore, the lensing of God's stuff on earth, the focalization of eternity in time. Consciously or unconsciously, we direct the flow of universal mind into form. This grants us tremendous power, and with it the innate responsibility to make or break our world through the extraordinary working power of our minds. Thus, the practical emphasis in the science of mind of schooling in the power of trained thought. The science of mind takes seriously the dictum of being recreated through the renewing of our minds. And not just our minds, but our bodies and souls as well. The powers of second genesis lie within us, but this means that we must agree to attune and orchestrate our thoughts and emotions toward a higher purpose and creative ends. In this we have help. For spirit assures that the lure of becoming is always calling, as is the incendiary vision of what we may be. The science of mind gives us the passion for a new possibility, along with precise and clear directions for building a new matrix of mind and manifestation. It shows us how to activate the constructive imagination and how to hold in thought and feeling the intention and energy for healing, holing, that's spelled W-H-O-L-I-N-G, holing, and co-creation. It shows us how to stop boring God 
by waking up to the fact that we are in God's school to learn the principles of world making and the evolving of self and society. The science of mind shows us how to be active and creative citizens in the universe and the innerverse, richer than all previous imaginings. We have no choice then but to democratize greatness and utilize the whole continuum of human and divine potential. The, divine, the science of mind says this is not only possible, it is what is expected of us. Whew, that's a lot to take in. And now we go back to our beautiful musicians for another song, Anton and Laura. Anton and Laura. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, who truly has become a wonder, leading a mythic life herself, but also spending her life in large part encouraging and supporting others to become the wonder that each of us was meant to be. Jean Houston was born for these times. She spent more than 80 years traveling the world, learning from 109 different cultures 
and inspiring communities wherever she goes. From a young age when she walked the park in New York City with an elder nameless friend whose words she found compelling, he spoke in the depth of the human spirit and mind. He awakened in her an awareness of the interweaving of both the spiritual and physical dynamics of life. His words were like poetry of the soul and inspiration for her young, hurting heart at the time. It was years later when she saw the photo, his photo, on the cover of a book that she realized she had been mentored by none other than Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, the famous French idealist philosopher and Jesuit priest. It was this teacher who kindled in Jean the idea of the universal evolution of consciousness. The seeds of this kind man's teaching launched Jean Houston into a lifetime of belief in the possibilities of the human spirit and the magnificent latent ca capacities of individuals and societies awaiting expression. A brilliant scholar with, as she told me, a bunch of doctorates, Jean has written more than 30 books exploring the breadth of human possibility. She was an advisor to UNICEF in human and cultural development and has mentored two sitting United States presidents as well as individuals, communities, and heads of state around the world. Deepak Chopra claims that Jean Houston is the most important teacher of human potential today. She believes that we have now come to the time when the real work of humanity begins and remains forever the champion of the human spirit. It is my extreme honor and pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jean Houston. Well, thank you so very, very much, Reverend Kimberly. What a pleasure to be here at the Center for Spiritual Living. What a pleasure to be able to reach out to so many of you. I cannot see your faces because we are in this state of this great problem and challenge. And that brings us to the fact that we're living in the most challenging and evocative times in human history. Now, the interesting thing about evolution, that evolution, the jumps in evolution, always seem to occur during very difficult, hot times. So welcome to evolutionary times. Years ago in a book called Jump Time, I actually spoke about these jumps in jump time. And I'm going to ask you, wherever you are, stand up, or if you have to stay in your chair, you're going to jump in your chair. As I tell you about the big jumps in evolution to bring you up to present time. So every time I say jump, would you either jump or make a little jump in your chair, okay? Now, the first jump was the Big Bang, an explosion of light and sound so intense that whatever was before or for some other where imploded itself into a tiny charge of hydrogen and jumped into universal form. Thank you, everybody's jumping in this room. <laughs> then some five billion years ago, a supernova reached jump time and with an unimaginably fierce explosion offered itself to the universe in billions of pieces. Another jump came for us when elements spun out of explosion, coalesced into a ball that condensed into our mother, our molten planet. Many jumps of cooling, crusting, boiling, steaming, raining, seas form, the crust roils, land masses jump and shift, break off and crawl over each other, pulverizing everything in their wake. Meteors whiz by, raising blinding dust storms, or caroom into the Earth's crust, toasting and tossing pieces of it sky high. It's set up for the biggest jump of all, life. Lightning spikes the Earth. Molecules break apart and recombine, jumping through change after chemical change. At the edges of the rock in the shallow waters, the feast of life begins. Giant proteins play with RNA and DNA. Some jump to form enzymes which hurry everything along. Nucleate acids hold the information to make the huge jump to self-replication. 
molecules build on each other, combine and recombine, building ever larger structures, modeling and learning from each other, jump, cell walls that move and flex, letting food in and waste out, jump, bacteria form, creating food for themselves. As a waste product, a deadly poison, oxygen is released, jump, Cope with oxygen, jump, grow or die, cooperate or perish, make agreements, enjoy diversity, put it all to work, jump. The mothers and the fathers of all born, the nucleated cell, jump, cell mitosis, jump. Sexual reproduction, organisms unite so that the species can continue. Plants, jump. Sea creatures, jump. Land creatures, big jump. Dinosaurs, insects, flowers, birds, jump. Heads up, snout rise, eyes converge, brain grows, jump, walking upright, jump, vocal communication, jump, awareness of ourselves, jump, tool making, clothes wearing, plant gathering, seed setting, wheel turning, horse turning, water channeling, plow furrowing, loom spinning, food storing, star charting, towers building, smel metal smelting, myth telling, hieroglyphs and cuneiforms and alphabets to record all this, jump, bureaucracy and empire, jump, religions and scriptures, Buddha, Confucius, Pythagoras, Christ, jump, book scribing, print pressing, art making, play writing, telescopes, microscopes, spectroscopes, Stethoscopes, Renaissance, Revolution, Resettling, Migration, Liberty, Fraternity, Equality, Democracy, Jump, Vaccination, Sanitation, Medication, Refrigeration, Computers, Air Travel, Space Travel, Life Extending, Gender Choosing, Species Making, World Links, World Banks, Global Village, and here we are because it's jump time. And oh, friends, these jumps just continuing one after the other. And here we are in the most interesting time in human history. Now I realize that other times in history thought they were it. They're wrong. This is it. This is one of the biggest jumps of all. Where the problems, where there's the virus, or climate change, and so many other things, things happening so fast. But do not be afraid. You were made for these times. It's true. You were made for these times. Do you know how amazing you are? Do you? Your brain is the most incredible thing that we're currently aware of. Your brain has something like 100 billion neurons, each of which is connected to approximately 10,000 other neurons. And that means that since I've been talking to you, your brain has been processing approximately 20 million bits of data per second, using only 20 watts of power. To put your natural brilliance in perspective, you could take most of the world's largest supercomputers, hardwired together, tens of millions of watts, and it cannot even replicate what your brain did in the last second. Your consciousness, dear friends, your consciousness has more innate intelligence than the world's largest mainframe computers. And your mind-body system is constantly processing a massive stream of data from everywhere. Now, a great deal of this takes place in the subconscious mind. And, but the fact is, most of us use a tiny, fraction of our limitless intelligence, a tiny fraction. What does that mean? When I was eight years old, I went to a wonderful school in New York City that took us to meet the great elders of the time. And one of the people they took us to meet was Albert Einstein. So we came in and we sat down and he came in, he was very sweet, a little big, a lot of hair. I think he had two different types of socks on. And one of our smart aleck kids said, uh, Mr. Einstein, how can we get to be as smart as you? And he said, ah, read fairy tales. We did not like that answer at all. So another smart aleck kid said, well, Mr. Einstein, how can we get to be smarter than you? Ah, read more fairy tales. 
Well, after this, I went up and I said, uh, Mr. Einstein, are you talking about our imagination? Ah, you're right, the imagination. That's my biggest quality. What do you mean, sir? Well, you know, people think I'm smarter than mathematics. I'm not really stupid. I have to hire the students to do the mathematics work. But what I've got is imagination. I can ride, I can ride them with a beam of light. And I understand things. E equals m squared. The gravity is my imagination. Now, let's talk about this imagination. You see, we know that we have a body and a mind that is loaded with treasures and phenomenal capacities. Capacities for thinking in many different ways. How do you think, friends? Do you think in images? Do you think in words? Do you think in feelings? Do you think in music? Do you think in intuition? You can understand the world from many different perspectives, but the key to it is allowing yourself to imagine these sorts of things. Now, my whole life has been devoted to mm, reorchestrating your body, your mind, through the imagination, through the higher dream, to be able to see the world from different perspectives. Our big problem is that we have been so slammed down into very single line focus because of, well, social media, television, bad news, that we have lost or at least we have limited ourselves to redeem the time, redeem the unread vision of the higher dream. We find that when we begin to rethink ourselves, reimagine the possibilities, ah, so many things come along with it. You can speak to your own brain, your head brain, your heart brain, your gut brain. You can be friended. You can enter into deep or co-creative partnership with, to do remarkable things. You can see the world from many different perspectives, a quality desperately needed in this time. You can enter in the creative realms of the mind, wherein you find the unexpected universe available to you for information, high creativity, spiritual experience. And you can know something that the ancient writers of scriptures knew in many traditions. And that is that we do not just live in the universe. The universe lives in us. The universe lives in us. You are not an encapsulated bag of skin dragging around a dreary little ego. You are God's stuff <laughs> that has been placed into a biodegradable space-time suit, but at the same time has this immense access to universal knowledge. The key is the imagination, to be able to think and dream yourself to there. You can then select for new possibilities and turn them into probabilities in one's life. You can be a co-designer, a co-creator in the design of social structures that enhance life rather than diminish it. And we're living in a time, this is something that I've been doing, I've been talking to groups all over the world in the same way in this live streaming, to begin to get together, especially with young people, and begin to design social structures that work. Because these are the times, we are the people, and we are at that point of evolutionary jumping, evolutionary jumping, when we really are being called upon to join great creation, the universe, God, in this ultimate job of co-creating and designing a world that works, you see. So what we have thought of as extraordinary becomes the ordinary and the necessary. And on the spiritual level, the powerful guidance that is there for each of you for the asking, partnership with principles, Qualities that, for lack of better terms, throughout the ages we have given them metaphorical forms, calling them archetypes, angels, helpers, the high self, 
the oversoul, the entelechy. These are principles which assist creation in the recreation and the growth of ourselves into the fullness that is required of us to take on the stewardship of this world and time. But they can also be seen in a way more available to the frontiers of science, particularly quantum physics, and it is quantum physics that tells us that we have access. We are the universe in miniature. Now, how do we come to terms with that fact that we are the universe in miniature? With access to macro and micro cosmic dimensions all put into this little package called me and you and space time. So one of the things that I'd like to talk to you about now with some little exercises is how to activate these templates, these latent capacities that are there waiting for you to begin to enter into them with soul-charging enjoyment of the opportunities that will then appear, which could not be seen when we were contained within the walls of the old story. The old story is dying in our time. Be not afraid, you were made for these times. And when you begin to tap into the emerging new story, oh, dear friends, you will discover an ecology of soul-driven living. How to fulfill the universe's plans for you when the soul of the world and your soul come together. This is truly the tap dance of kingdom come. And it means the creation of another order of consciousness. And this other order of consciousness has a great deal to do with imagination. Now, I'm going to give you now several exercises that may seem very simple, but I assure you they will be growing millions of new neurons in your brain. That's this physical part. But with regard to your soul, they will be evoking in you plans possibilities, a passion for the possible that up to now you may not have known you had. Now, one is very simple. It has to do with sensory richness. I once studied 55 of some of the most creative people in North America. Among my research subjects, when they studied with me, were Joseph Campbell, Margaret Mead, um, people whose names you would or would not know, but Mr. Fuller, but who had tapped into an incredible spectrum of latent genius. What were their secrets? They were high sensates. They, they were fascinated by their own minds. They tapped into the incredible resources that comes that when you activate your senses. So instead of eating an apple, <laughs> you eat the apple and the apple is eating you. You feel not just the incredible sparking, tingling of the juice. You become the juice. You close your eyes and you can still be in that apple. Or you can go into an Italian restaurant <laughs> and you say, mm, it has tomato sauce, mm, mozzarella, hey, tanta bella cosa, so many beautiful things happening here. But you become the Italian restaurant. You become the food itself. When you touch the long, bony nose of a horse, you feel not only the gentleness and the sweetness and the horsiness of it all, you become horsey yourself. You become what you behold as that great child adult genius, William Blake, said. You become what you behold. You actively work for not only the outer senses, but the inner senses. Because when you have activated the outer senses and really paid attention, what are called the proprioceptors, the inner senses bloom, and those are the ways to increase imagination and greatly increase intelligence. That is a simple exercise. But boy, does it do remarkable things for you. Here's another simple exercise. See, that's on a sensory level. But on a psychological level, 
you are not simply your local egoic self. You have many, many other selves in you. I'll tell you from my own life. Um, Reverend Kimberly talked about my many books. I hate writing. And I'll tell you why I hate writing. When I was about, I don't know, when I was in the third grade, I think, and the teacher said, now, children, I want you to write an essay on what you uh, did on your summer vacation. Yes, Ms. Johnson. So I went home, and I have such terrible handwriting. I still do. My handwriting looks like a drunk chicken writing Sanskrits. So I very early learned to use two fingers and type. So I typed painfully out my composition, put it in my, my school bag. Next day, send in your uh, essays, children, and I sent mine in. And the next day, I looked at my essay then, because the typing was much better. And there was a note attached. It came from my dad. Now, my father was a comedy writer. He wrote Bob Hope Show and things like that. And his, he said, hey, kid, your stuff stinks. Here, I wrote you a better one that'll get you an A, which it did. And I went home and I said, Daddy, don't you ever do that again. That is so bad. That is wrong. Yeah, 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 says my father. Well, the next time came along, my father, I looked, at my, he had changed my, my uh, composition. And he said, hey, kid, this is even better. I'll get you an A plus, which it did. <laughs> oh, and I would sneak in with, you don't remember, what was it called, that, that mimeograph paper? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mimeograph, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the carbon paper. The carbon uh -huh. was terrible. Anyway, so I would sneak in my own um, papers, and the teacher would say, Jane, dear, is something wrong? <laughs> You're not living up to your potential. This is how you develop trauma and a problem. I hate to write, but I happen to be a very good cook because my mother from Sicily, Maria Nunziata, Serafina Graziella, Fiorino Papetio Tadaro, married Jack Houston of Texas. They hated each other's food. <laughs> and to try to keep them together, I became the world's first you know, international fusion cook. So I'm a decent cook. And thus, in order for me to write well, I have to be a cook. And so I stir in a bunch of ideas, and I add the seasonings of, of different kinds of word combinations and associations. That's the only way I can write. Now, I used another quality of mine to help bridge to a quality of mine that I happen to dislike. A lot. All right, and that's where those 30-odd books came from. They came from. Food. Anyway, you have many other beings in yourself. Many other beings. Just think about them. Child, mother, father, um, dog lover. Um, for me, it would be a stand-up comedian sometimes. It would also be um, an early athlete. I was a fencer as a young person. But it would also be dreamer, wild woman, it would also be mystic. It would also be traveler. But think of all the different people that you have within you. And you find that if you would pay attention and really take them on with music, music in the background, music always helps in the ways of making connections with latent kinds of consciousness, latent powers. Take on other persona, develop them, write about them, feel them in yourself. This is not going crazy, this is going smart. And then you can take these, these parts of yourselves and apply them to things that normally you have difficulties with, just like I am a cook who becomes not a bad writer when I take on my cooking. So that's something else we have within us. You know, if schizophrenia, the split personality, is the disease of the human condition, then, here's a new word, polyphrenia, the orchestration of our many selves becomes our expanded health. Now, do I have five more minutes? Oh, absolutely. Let's just so see where we are. Whatever you want. Okay. All right. Now, those are just some very basic, simple ones. You'd have to go to my books to find a pile or some of my seminars to find lots and lots. Because my, my big job right now is prepping people for living in times of so much not just change, but whole system change.
How do we prepare ourselves for living in a time? A massive jump time, you see. So, um, you can go to my website, genehouston.com, if you're interested in any of that. But the point, dear friends, is that many times you feel yourself called, dreaming, put into a mindset where it's not just if only, it's that I know that I am on the verge of so much more and I can then begin to practice. These are the dreams that are coming from higher orders of being. And this brings me now to higher orders of being. I have discovered in my work with thousands of people over many years that each of us contains a higher order of guidance, whether you call it the universe or God, or, and here's another word for you, entelechy. Entelechy means a deeper purpose, a, a, a purpose that leads us to a deeper destiny for ourselves, and with it a greater kindness, compassion, and the momentum to get things done, to have the gift of the follow-through. Entelechy is a Greek word, it really means not only higher purpose, but it is also your lure of becoming and your great helper. Now, whether you call it Jesus, or whether you call it Athena, or whether you call it, you can give it your own names, just the higher, the higher destiny. The entelechy, it's the entelechy of an acorn to be a big oak tree. It's the entelechy of a baby to be a grown-up human being. It's the entelechy of almost anything, and of you particularly, to grow into the next form, to live creatively, beautifully, co-creatively in this extraordinary time and space, yes? So I'm going to give you an exercise. We'll have some music in the background to play it. Rub your hands. Get them good and hot. Right. Put your hands up so you can keep your eyes open or closed. Those may not be a bad idea. And I want there you feel coming toward you, you can actually feel it. It might be a tingling, it might be a slight breeze, but there's something, someone there. This entelechy, this higher guidance, who is looking upon you with so much love. And you feel yourself empowered, called, evoked, nurtured, nourished. You feel yourself growing in new ways. You feel yourself released from the old constraints and moving into this higher order of being because this intelligence, this beloved, beloved presence, this spiritual presence is, is calling you through the ways of loving, is calling you, is loving you into the higher incarnation of who and what you really are. And so you feel yourself loved, oh, loved so much, cherished, nurtured. Yes, knows your bummers, <laughs> knows your interesting blunders, but not beyond that, knows, knows the fullness and the depth of your human genius, your human, the brilliance of your humanity. And now if you feel yourself being evoked, honored, loved, called forth, Given the energy, the consciousness, the motivation, the sheer joyousness of becoming who and what you really, really are. And knowing that this intelligence is with you from this moment forth, should you choose, should you choose to really honor Practice and be in this relationship. Called forth, you and the beloved, the entelechy, from this moment forth. Being called forth. And thus able to tap into what is called the treasuries of unseen generosities. The many, many capacities latent but now no longer latent, potent, and ready to be with you through this loving relationship with 
be until it be. Be not afraid, dear friends. You were made for these times. And a part, part of your job is to redeem the time. Redeem the unread vision of the higher dream which dwells within you. Yes. Thank you. to begin to anchor some of those powerful, inspirational, sweet, profound words of Jean Houston. Oh. Once again, I recognize what Dr. Houston called in teleki, that higher purpose calling us, luring us knowing that it exists both within and without us. We felt it in our hands, knowing that it is supported both from within and from beings all around us, angels, all the things she invoked. That this presence for good, for evolution, for higher purpose is always right within us, calling to us. That there is infinite possibility in it and that we are indeed in a jump time. We are called right now to let go, to listen, and to jump. And I absolutely know as each one of us is able to tune in to our own higher purpose as we are willing to be lifted to a new order of consciousness, a new vision for what the world can look like, that we are each given the opportunity to be a part of that right now, right here. As Jean reminded us, we are made for these times. Each one of us is made for these times. So I'm so grateful for this reminder, for this bit of inspiration, for this bit of knowing that we are each guided, we are each called, each one of us. And together, we absolutely can and will create a world, a new world, a world of possibility, a world of equality, a world of compassion a world where each of us is honored as the beautiful, divine, perfect, whole being that we are, respected, lifted, supported. Just as that God within and God without supports, guides, sources each one of us. The God within is the God without, the God without is the God within. Whatever we call it, if God is a word that <laughs> triggers you, intelligence, love intelligence, infinite wisdom. I am so grateful for Dr. Wis Dr. Wisdom. Yes, she is, Dr. Houston's wise words. So grateful for the inspiration that someone who writes and speaks so beautifully has but to invoke her talent and passion for cooking, knowing that as we invoke our talent, our passion, our senses, we too can move into doing and creating things perhaps we can't even possibly imagine right now. All things are possible, all things, beloveds. And so I'm knowing that this week we let these words sink in, that perhaps we listen to this inspirational talk again. Perhaps we spend time quietly feeling just as the acorn knows it is, has the potential to become an oak tree, that we feel that entelechy, we feel that potential, and that we act upon the guidance that we receive when we listen with all of our senses. I am so grateful to have this opportunity for all of us to come together. I'm so grateful for Jean Houston and her generosity in being with us today in the generous life she has lived and continues to live, knowing that each of us has a path before us if we choose to walk it that is lit and that helps light the world. And so right now, I just let this word fall into the ears, the heart of that divine intelligence, knowing that that divine intelligence responds, that my prayer is heard, it is answered. In great gratitude, we say together, and so it is. Amen.
Wow. <laughs> I think it's time for some music. again, Laura and Anton. Ah, this is the point in our Sunday service when we normally pass the basket, and it'll be a long time before we pass any physical basket. I want to say, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you to those who have continued to generously support you. We so very much appreciate it. And if you are able, we invite you to, to give something to support our work. I'll talk in a little bit about what we have planned for this summer. But for right now, the affirmation we usually say is this, and perhaps you can repeat it silently as I say it out loud. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I sh choose to circulate. Press down, shaken together, and running over, and so it is. There are several ways if you are able and you'd like to support Center for Spiritual Living Rogue Valley. You can go to our website, cslroguevalley.org, and hit the donate button. There's an 800 number to call. It's on your screen now, I believe, 800-675-7430. And you can give with a credit card. Or you can go to our website. I think I already said that, and donate. Ah. <sighs> We have a lot of things planned for this summer. We're going to be offering online classes, book studies, connection circles. And so if you would like to hear more about what's going on and what we're offering on our Facebook page, you can sign up for our email and that way you'll receive our e-newsletter, which comes out every Wednesday. We'd love for you to be a part of that. And now that we're connected virtually, you can join classes from all over the world, wherever you are. Let's see, I think that's probably about it for now. I think we're going to um, have a closing song, I Am a Light, and then I will do a quick benediction, and we'll say goodbye for now. I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. light in this world and I shine and I shine and I shine so bright and I shine and I shine and I shine so bright you are a light you are a light you are a light in this world you are a light you are a light you are a light. 
Just a reminder, my friends, that we do shine so bright. You each shine so bright. And I bless each one of us now to be and to shine the light that we're intended to shine in the world. Taking Dr. Houston's reminder that through imagination, we can absolutely transform our lives and create whole system change, that we are at this jump time, we are the people, this is our time. And the reminder that what we choose to behold, we become. Peace and blessings to each one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. From me and for all of us, including Dr. Houston, our musicians and our crew here at Center for Spiritual Living in Rogue Valley, Medford, Oregon. Goodbye for now. Love and blessings to each of you.